Hello, my Toll Town friends. This month we're going to be working on a little something to store or present your Keurig K cups. Um, just something a little more holiday and festive than a little wire drawer or a cardboard box where I usually keep mine. So I wanted to get started on this. So let's get going. So these are the wood pieces that you should receive. Um, there's a holly and berry cutout, the main uh, latte cup cutout, and the base so that you can stand your, um, if you can get it in here right, right? It's easier once you glue them together, but that way it has a stand and it will, it's a freestanding thing so it can sit right by your coffee maker. Anyway, one of the first things you want to do is you're going to get two of these bases with this slot in it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to glue those together. Um, if you're cutting your own, if you want, you could just cut the base out of like quarter inch or even a little bit thicker, whatever floats your boat or, uh, or whatever. So I'm just going to uh, stick some glue. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue. Seems to work good for me and it dries relatively quickly so i'm going to stick this on here and i want to be sure that i'm getting this even you know all the way around you don't want any discrepancies because that'll keep your little guy from spitting in there really well so once you think you've got it pretty much centered i'll i'll just pound it on my counter here. Then I'm going to carefully set it aside so that I don't mess with it and move it. And we're going to go ahead and get started on our piece. So the first thing I want to do as far as painting goes is I'm going to take some of my um, blue painters tape and I'm going to tape off and I'm going to tape off here where the bottom of the lid is. And then we're going to give this part, the part with the holes in it, a coat or two of warm white paint. Now, I don't think you need to watch me base this in, so I'm going to go off camera, base this in. I'm sure it's going to take at least two coats, and I'll be back. Okay, so two coats work just fine. I'm going to give this a little sand. So I have a smooth painting surface. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to grab some country red and a stripe stencil because I want to put those stripes, uh, put some stripes on my coffee cup. And it really doesn't, I'm using a three quarter inch stripe stencil. Um, if you have something that's smaller, That'll work just fine, okay? So don't worry about it if you don't have a three-quarter inch. Um, if you want one, you can email me and I can cut one for you. Um, but it really doesn't matter if it's three-quarters inch or half inch would be just fine too. So I'm going to stick that on there. And I am going to tape this down across the top here. And... I'll be back after I grab my country red. All right, so you want to grab your favorite stencil brush, and mine at the moment is Chris Hoy's um, Spectacular Stencil Brushes. This one is a number five. Um, my favorite size, I think, is the number four. But since these are larger stripes, I'm going to go ahead and use the number five. And now, when I load my stencil brushes, um, I load them much like I do when I'm going to dry brush something. So I, uh, let's get over here. So what I do is I pick up some paint on the brush, and then I kind of scrub it around on my palette, because I want to get that paint into the bristles a little bit. But then the next thing I do is I go over here to my um, towel that I put on the back, and I wipe off the excess paint because I don't want it to bleed under the stencil 
as much. So I'm just going to go and I kind of do a, a circular motion. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I could wipe out a little bit more paint. So I'm just going to add these red stripes. To this piece just to make it look like a festive Christmas cup. Now hold your, your stencil down um, so that you get a cleaner stripe. All right, getting there. few smaller stripes, of course, it's going to take you a little longer. Hold that down there just so I, because I'm going around these holes and stuff, you want to be careful that you don't get up under your stencil. I'm going to say all this and hope that all my paint is Staying where it belongs. Okay. It's easier to add more paint than it is to take the paint off. So if it's not red enough to suit you, you can always come back and add another coat, but I think this is going to be just fine for me. And I took a peek and it's looking pretty good under there. And some of you may want to use a cosmetic wedge sponge to uh, stencil with. I've been known to do that too. I know it may not look like it, but I was a beautician, cosmetologist, is that what we call us now? In my younger days. So I keep my license up so that I can buy things like cosmetic wedge sponges at the beauty supply store. It tells you how old I am because I'm calling it all this, the old things we used to call it. But anyway, they sure do come in handy sometimes to stencil. All right. I think I'm going to call that done. So I'm going to wash out my stencil brush, set it aside. Let's take the stencil off and see what I ended up with. Yep, I think that's going to work just fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, dry this. It may feel dry to the touch, but I want to make sure it's really dry. And then we're going to grab a snowflake stencil and I want to add some snowflakes to these stripes. So I'll be back after I have this dry. All right, so I have this little um, snowflake stencil that I've used on a lot of my pieces. So I am just going to put it on here and stencil some snowflakes, mainly on the red stripes with warm white. I guess I really didn't need to stencil on the blue tape, but just to be safe. Okay, so I needed to get a little more paint out of that brush. I got little goobers there, but lettering goes over that, so it will be okay. Turn this over and get a couple different snowflakes on here. 
you really can't see it when you get onto the white, so we're good there. All right, let's go. I'm going to turn it this way. So uh, a larger snowflake stencil would be great. You'd get, you wouldn't have to uh, fuss so much with moving it around. But this is what I had handy, so this is what I'm using. And I think it'll work just fine, just to kind of um, holiday up this thing. And you see, they don't have to be opaque. They can be pretty faint. They don't have to be solid. I, I don't think we want them solid. I'm going to add a little one right here. Okay. And let's go here. So just um, buzz around stenciling some snowflakes onto your red stripes. I'll be back when I get mine done. All right, so I've got my snowflakes on here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to dry brush some highlighting through the center area of these stripes with warm white again. So get out your favorite brush to dry brush with. I like to use uh, Langnickel short round sable brushes or this um, Dynasty brush, um, it's a Number 200, this is a size 12. So if you're a Dynasty person, you have a handy dandy um, brush you can dry brush with too. So I'm gonna go through the center of these stripes just to lighten them up a little bit. And hopefully give this uh, cup a little bit more dimension. So you don't have to worry about the side edges, just kind of down through the center area of these stripes. And now that I'm working, I'm getting warm, so I'm going to need to take this sweatshirt off. Doesn't take much, just a little scrub of color. And if you want to know how I like to dry brush, I do have a video on my YouTube channel that deals with dry brushing. It's on pumpkins, but this, the uh, steps are all the same. I couldn't handle the heat anymore. So off came the sweatshirt. All right. So we're basically done dry brushing. So let's wipe, uh, wash out our brush and set it aside because we'll be using it later with some different colors. The next thing I want to do is I want to float some shading around the edges. And when I say edges, when you get down here, you want to um, not go down onto this little... Um, notch thing. You want to give yourself the bottom of your cup there. So just draw a line across there or get your ruler out and draw a line however you'd like. But the first shading I'm going to do is going to be with some very well blended out country red. Now I know that's the color that we use to base our stripes in, but that's what we want to use. Trust me, it'll be just fine. But I want you to blend it out really well. And I'll let you see what I like, what I mean when I say blend it out. Now I'm going to be using a three-quarter inch flat brush so I can get a nice soft wide float. But I'm going to corner load just like I normally do. And normally when you blend for a float, you tend to blend in the same area. But when you want to soften that float, what you want to do is you want to walk away from that area so that you're leaving a little bit more paint on the palette, okay? So you're softening that float a little bit. 
So I'm going to go across this top edge first. My tape's going to help me out there. So just a nice, soft float of country red. And now if you'd like to mop your floats out, this would be a good place to do that, to soften it a little bit and blend it out just a little further. This is a half inch mop, I think, yep. And I do like to mop my floats out. So I'm gonna go down the sides. I don't know if you could tell, but I kind of uh, curved this corner here. I walked the color out a little bit so that it would kind of round that corner a little bit. If you're going to stop, stop on a red stripe. And I'm going to walk the color up this corner here down in the bottom too, just to round it out a little bit more. I'm also going to float across the bottom of my cup, and this is where you want to float above this little notch. Doesn't have to be perfect. A line across the bottom. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more so I can do the other side of my cup. All the way up. And here again, I'm going to turn that corner and kind of curve that float a little bit. Walk it out. Soften it with my mop. to this corner just because I can all right that's looking pretty good now you could float shading all the way around these little holes but it's gonna get covered up with the rim of the cup here so I really don't see the, the necessity to do that. We might add some little green ribbons or something just to cutesy them up a little bit. So now I want to make sure that this float is dry before I add the next float. So I'm coming and I'm going to hit it with my craft heat it gun just to make sure that float is set and dry. So the next float is going to be with some very well blended out deep midnight blue. And this one you do want to make sure you blend it out and soften it quite a bit. You can use that same brush, large brush, or if you're not comfortable with large brushes, use the size you're comfortable with. But the larger your brush, of course, the nice and wide float you're going to get. So I really want to blend this out because I don't want it to be real, real stark blue. But I do want the blue to kind of blend with that red and give me a little bit more dimension to my float. Now my mop brush is dropping a bunch of hairs, which is never fun. I mean, I know what it's like to lose hair. It's not fun. But dry, and you can just kind of brush those off. So I'm going to come down my side again. Let's see. Yep. And around this corner. 
bottom. And I think you can see how that just kind of makes that edge turn the corner just a little bit more than if you just did the red. So I'm going to start over here in this corner and come across the bottom. So let's soften that a little bit. And last side. Every time you reload, you want to make sure that you're blending it out and softening it. Okay, let's turn that corner a little bit. A mop brush can really fix floats fast. Alright, so I think that cup has a little bit more dimension to it than it had earlier. So I'm going to go ahead, pull this tape off, and I'm going to dry these floats, and then I'm going to re-tape off so I can paint the top, the lid of this cup. Alright, so I've dried my floats, I'm going to re-tape this so that I can paint the lid of this coffee cup and what I want to do is I want to seal this edge so that the green that I'm going to paint up here doesn't bleed through so I'm just going to take my finger and pick up a little warm white and I'm just going to run it along this edge and that's going to help to seal that edge so that the green paint doesn't bleed through onto your nice red and white striped cup. You don't want it to be real stark white, so just scrub it on there with your finger and seal that edge. So I'm going to base the top of my cup, the lid, with Irish moss. And it probably, it might take two coats. Yeah, it probably will. So let's get this painted with Irish moss, a couple of coats, and I'll be back. Okay, so two coats of Irish moss did the job on here. While I had that green in my brush, I went ahead and painted the holly leaf on the cutout. So I'm going to give this a quick little sand. Cool, nice smooth surface to paint on. So one of the first things we're going to do is we are going to dry brush highlighting. That's why I said you needed to dry out your dry brush really well. And I am going to do that with margarita. So make sure your dry brush is dry or get another one if you have several. And we are going to dry brush some highlighting through the two sections, there are actually two sections, this larger, lower, rounded, and this top, square, more square top. So I'm going to dry brush with margarita through the center of each of those sections, treating them as separate sections. Now, I wasn't going to put any kind of stenciling or decoration on this green top, but you're more than welcome to, to go ahead and add something if you want. You could add dots or checks or whatever you prefer. But I was just going to leave the lid kind of flying on its own power. And we have some lettering up there, so um, I didn't want to complicate it too much. All right, so I went through the center of that top square or rectangle piece. So now I'm going to work on this bottom curved piece. 
And it's a little wider, so the dry brush is going to be a little wider. And I think you can see how it's already starting to give it a little bit more dimension by adding that dry brush. And when you're dry brushing, you should have to scrub um, to get that paint off your brush. If it's coming off too easy and you're not scrubbing, then that means that you have too much paint in your brush and it's, it might turn out kind of blotchy. All right. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna float a highlight across this top edge and across this curved top edge. So what I want to do is I want to get out my ruler, or a straight edge. I had a ruler here. Who knows where it went? It's probably sitting right under my nose. Yep, there it is. I'm going to get out my ruler, and I'm because I want to give myself kind of a line. And you could use tape. You could tape this off if you wanted to. I know, I think Renee Mullins does that. But I just wanted a little line there. So I'm going to float highlighting across the top of this rectangle part of the lid and across the top of the curved part of the lid. And I'm going to go ahead and just use my um, half inch flat brush. And I'm going to do that with Margarita again. So far that's the only highlight color I'm using. I'm just going to go across this top edge, and it's going to go on kind of bright, but it will tone down as it dries. But you just need to highlight that top edge a little bit. And once again, I'm going to get out that handy dandy mop brush and soften that a little bit. So now let's go to our larger curved part of the top. And I'm not starting all the way down here at this tip. I'm kind of starting about halfway down that side. Whoops. And I'm just going to come across that top edge that I marked off. And before it gets too dry, I'm going to Pounce that with my mop brush to soften it a little bit. And there we go. All right. So one of the next things I want to do is I want to float some shading along this bottom edge and this bottom edge and it's going to go up and around the sides a little bit with black forest green. Get out a little bit of black forest green. We're going to use that color on the holly leaves also. And again I'm just using my half inch flat. much water in there. And I want that to curve a little bit. So let's soften that. Get back in. Oh, what did I do? I got too much paint across the bristles of my brush. I see what happened. There we are. 
have those days where you just can't seem to get a nice, even flow? Apparently, I'm having one of those days. And it's usually the days that I want to video. It's a little better. All right. So let's mop this out, soften it a little bit. And now we'll try for the bottom edge. See how I do on that. I'm going to go straight across the bottom. The tape is going to help me a lot right here. So I don't have to be quite as careful. But I do want to walk up these corners, these sides, a little bit. That was a little more exaggerated than what we did on the top, but that's what I want. Sometimes what I want and what I get aren't the same things. But I think it's going to work this time. All right. So, there we go. Take that tape off. And now what I want to do is I want to deepen the shading right under the edge where the lid goes into the cup with another nice soft float of deep midnight blue. You just want to make it a little bit darker so you get the idea that the cup is actually inside the lid. Careful, it works just fine. So I think that did the job. Can you believe we're getting close to being done with the cup part? So now what I think I want to do is I want to add um, a little bow above each of these little holes that are going to hold our Keurig cups. And I'm going to first take my chalk pencil and decide what the middle is. A ruler would be handy. The um, holes are one and three quarters inches across. So that means um, half and a quarter and an eighth. So. Let's see if we can figure this out. So this is where the center is going to be on that one. And this is where the center is going to be on that one. We think. I'm guessing. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, really. Just putting a little dot where... The center. Now, notice it's not right on the um, edge. We want to set it above uh, just a little bit so that um, we can see it above the cup. So I'm just going to take my liner brush and I'm going to, I think I'll do these with the Irish moss again. Just going to add a couple little, uh, kind of like comma strokes. Let's get a little closer. Okay. 
and then just a little center. If you wanted to line ribbon all the way around, you could. So just a couple kind of comma strokes to make some little bows. Just to cutesy it up a little bit. We'll come back and overstroke those with some margarita. more little bows. Nothing real fancy. If you wanted to get fancy, you could. It's your piece. I'm just giving you suggestions. Alright, so now I'm going to come back with the same liner brush and some margarita. And I'm just going to add a little touch of a highlight on the tips of the bows and on the knot in the middle. Quick and easy little bows. They're just going to add a little bit of character and um, cuteness to the piece. All right, let's back off again because what we need to do is we need to do a little bit brighter highlight on this top lid. So once again, I'm going to dry out my dry brush and I'm going to need a little bit more warm white. And I'm going to keep this highlight kind of um, right of center. So just straight warm white. It's a dry brush. So this is just going to come in on the right side and kind of fade out as it gets to the center. So I'm also going to do a warm white highlight kind of down this right side across the stripes again. This one's just going to be about hmm, half an inch wide or so. But I'm just going to go all the way down. The stripes on this side, just to give that um, cup a shine on one side. Not much, mainly just right up in here. Okay, and I've got wiped out some of it. That's all right. Okay, so that's gonna work for me. I also want to just a tidge of a highlight in the other side of the lid and I'm just keeping that right on the edge there it's not going across all right and let me get that filled back in okay so we are going to set this aside for a minute and work on our holly so uh, your dry brush can still have warm white in it. You don't have to wash it out. If you did, you want to dry it quite a bit. But I'm going to pick up some margarita and I am going to dry brush highlighting on my holly leaf. And I'm going to treat it like it's divided into two sections by the center vein line. Okay, 
So you already kind of get the idea that it has a center vein line. I'm also going to float a highlight with Margarita across the top of the holly leaf. And then also across the center vein line. And it doesn't go all the way to the tip. Just kind of let it fade off. So I need to dry this a little bit. So I can come back and do my shading. And I'm going to float shading on my holly leaf with that black forest green. So that's going to go all along the bottom edge. And again, I want to kind of soften this float out. And it's also going to go above that center vein line. And again, just kind of uh, fading out before you get to the tip. And I also like to give my leaves, I, I call them like little butts. I like to come into this leaf here and just kind of float each one separately. And that's just giving it a place to tuck into the berries. Let's take a liner brush. I think this one might be a one. And some thin black green. I'm going to thin it down, liner consistency. You don't want this to be a, a bright, thick line. But you're going to line that center vein line. So stay up on the tip of your liner brush. And you want to give some little veins that come out from the center vein line. All right. We might as well finish this off. Let's go ahead and paint our berries with Country Red. Just three round berries. And they kind of overlap. Oop, I guess I could be on camera. They kind of overlap each other. Sorry, I pulled it close so I could paint it. Okay, so let's let those dry. While we're letting those berries dry, we can go to our base, and it's glued together fairly well. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a coat or two of black forest green. And if you want, you can paint the edges. I'm not going to because they're pretty nice and brown already. So a couple of coats of this. I'll be back when I have that done. Okay, so while I let the base dry a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and float. I'm going to go ahead and dry brush highlighting on my berries with country red plus a touch of warm white so I get a little bit lighter value country red kind of a pink and that's going to go since the berries 
uh, the holly and berries is going to go up here. I want to dry brush in the top, kind of top left side of each berry. Okay. I'm also going to float a highlight with that country red plus warm white. And that's going to go on that left side also. This is another one of those blended out because you don't want it to be just a real harsh line. Okay, let's let those floats dry and we will work on our base a little bit. And I can see on my um, holly leaf that I'm going to need to brighten up those highlights across the top a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up some warm white. I'm jumping around. I know. I'm sorry. And that brush is kind of wet. So I'm dry it a little bit more and then pick up some warm white. That's better. And I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of warm white in between those vein lines here and there. And I'm doing it top and bottom. Okay, now I'm going to set it aside to let the berries float dry. So on this guy, I think all I want to do is take my larger brush, probably the one you based it with, and I want to kind of dry it out. I've cleaned it. Now I'm going to dry it out a little bit. And I'm going to pick up some Irish moss, and I'm no water except what's already in the brush. And I'm just going to, let's see here, I'm just going to wipe it on my palette a little bit to give it um, more of a dry brush. Didn't mean to pick up that red, but it'll be okay. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly crosshatch the top of this base with that dried kind of Irish moss. So I've done it one way. I'm going to go ahead and do it the other way too. Mix it a crosshatch because I'm crossing what I just did. All right. And what I want to do is I want to take my chalk pencil and I'm just going to put a little dot in each corner a little ways in and then I'm going to take my liner brush and some warm white And what I want to do is I want to kind of add a little stripe around the edge. Now you could do whatever you like. I just wanted to keep it simple. I put the dots so that I would kind of have some place to aim. So if you wanted to put a dot in the middle here, that would be good too. I'm just going to add this stripe.
around the edge. I'm trying to keep it as even as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Thank goodness. Okay, cool. Now if you wanted to cutesy it up and add some red dots or something like that, you're more than welcome to do that too. And who knows, it could happen to mine also. So, let's see now. We want to put the pattern on for our lettering on our cup. And then we're going to work on that. So you're going to need lamp black for that. And I'm going to grab that and I'm going to put the pattern on for my lettering and I'll be back. All right, I almost forgot to finish my berries. So we're gonna float a little bit of shading on the right side of our berries with cranberry wine. For some reason that color, we don't need to use very much. If you don't have cranberry wine, you could use uh, black plum or deep burgundy. Either of those will work. All right, I think that's going to do. And then I want to lastly add a little warm white highlight. I'm just going to take my liner brush and I'm going to add a little warm white highlight on each of the berries. Now I still think those leaves need a little something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my liner brush. We're just gonna pump up that highlight a little bit more. And I'm gonna take some margarita. And I'm just gonna kinda stroke. Yeah, I think that's gonna do it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and do it along the lower edge too. Just to pop that up a little bit. And I think that's going to help. Because the, the holly leaves are going on the green lid. And so they get lost a little bit. But I think now they'll stand out a little bit better. All right, and if we wanted to, we could always move the holly leaves down here. Um, you could put them wherever you want. You want to put them over here, but uh, um, I originally designed it to just go right on there, on the lid like that. All right, so we can set our holly leaf and berries aside, and what we can do now is get out some lamp black. And we're going to work on our lettering a little bit. So you want to get yourself out a good liner. You don't want one that has all kinds of different little hairs going all different ways. No, I'm not going to put any water in my brush or in the paint. I'm not going to thin it down. I'm going to go into straight paint. And now I've had a lot of caffeine today, so who knows what this lettering is going to look like. So what I'm going to do is load my liner brush. I think this is probably an odd liner. And what I like to do is I like to um, flatten it out so it's kind of a square tip. I don't know if you can see that. So there, nice square tip on it. Not a point. Normally we want our liner to a point. But for this lettering, I want to use a square tip. 
and there, please take your time doing this lettering. And usually what I like to do is go through and do all the verticals first. And these um, printed, you know, letters are much easier, of course, than the handwritten letters. Whoopsie. That caffeine kicked in. All right, so we've got a lot of curves in cones. So I'm going to go through and do my horizontals now on first. There are a couple more verticals to do on that F, but I'll come in and do them in a minute. doesn't have any stirrups. Just has its crossbar. Okay, so let's work on this S. And here's where you need to take your time. So just take your time. And you can see it's not like you're um, writing the letter. You can do little bits and pieces of each letter at a time. You don't have to do it all at once. So now I'm going to come and add the stirrups. There's one on the C. And there's three on the M. Let's do the crossbar on the E. And then our two stirrups on our S. Now I'm going to go ahead and come down here and do then, since I've got my hand in the mood to do printing. So I might as well get that all out of the way first. Again, doing most of my verticals first. <laughs> 
and let's go and do our horizontals now. And that H has three stirrups. And the N has three. All right. So I want this to dry so I don't, don't drag my hand through it. So now we have calligraphy, calligraphy, handwriting to do. And this is just like when you're lining uh, scrolls or uh, curves or, or lifelines or anything, you want to make sure that you stay on the tip of your brush and um, as straight up and down as you can. Um, this is more like you're writing, but again, you don't have to do the whole letter in one fell swoop. You can do bits and pieces of the letter. And this, uh, especially with coffee, it's a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than your printing was. So it helps if you get your little pattern out there so you can see where you're going, where you should be going. So I'm going to start. This one, um, I still flatten it out to a, a square tip, but I'm going to start in this top. And I'm going to give that a little uh, bulbous end. Okay, I just kind of stopped and set my brush down a little bit further so I could get that bulbous end on it. Now, a little bit thicker. And I'm going to go up here to where it connects to my O, and that's where I'm going to pull the rest of that C. So now this O, I'm flattening my brush just a little bit more as I um, pull these letters so I can get a little bit thicker line. And today, for some reason, I'm finding that the uh, Handwriting is going a little bit easier for me. I shouldn't have said that though. Now. Because that's probably not a good thing to say. When it's going well. probably just jinxed myself. But just take your time. It's not a race. Being the first one done with all this lettering doesn't get you anything. Cool. All right, I'm going to head on down to the long words and do them in much the same way. And it's kind of smaller, so it's not going to be maybe as wide as the um, coffee was.
but take your time still. All right, so I'm being kind of quiet because I'm concentrating. I find it hard to carry on a conversation when I'm concentrating really hard. And here's a fancy yes. Getting there, my friends. And I'm washing my brush out just so I get a cleaner load on it. Sometimes you get a little too much paint left in the brush and it makes it hard to work with. So I stop and rinse off every once in a while. So close. Now, if you want to write something else, feel free. Get on your computer and find yourself a nice font. And write whatever you'd like on here. this part. You should be a pro by the time we get this done.
All right. And now, if you've done lettering with me before, you know there's always a little something extra that I need to add to it. And this is no different. So, on the letters, well, all of the letters are going to get a little bit of a highlight in the top of each letter, like the top half or so, with warm white. You just use the same brush that you painted them with. Oh, I forgot a couple of stirrups. Let's get those on there. Hmm. You were probably telling me that. Sandy, you forgot that. But there was a stirrup here and a stirrup here. Oh, that looks so much better. So now we're going to line that highlight in the top. A uh, third or half of each letter with warm white. So liner brush, you don't want to thin it down. Just pick up straight paint and kind of wipe it off like we did when we did the cross hatching on the base. So you want it to be a little bit more dry brushy. And so I'm going to go top of this F. You see how if I run out of paint, it's okay. I don't mind. That's just going to make those letters have a little bit more character. Get that little dot on the eye. There we go. doesn't have to fill up the whole letter. You can still see some black around the edges. Get a little bit more paint on that brush. So you're just going in like the top third of the letter or so and adding those little touches of a highlight. Kind of make some frosty. And the same thing with the handwritten letters. In fact, I think they're a little bit easier than the printed ones. Yeah, coffee went a whole lot faster. Again, back to the printing. And then, let's get our Christmas cheer. I could uh, cross my T and then go back and do that. So I'll go back and do that in a second. This goes much faster because your hand's already kind of trained for these um, curves. Cross that one T 
with some black. And then I need to add a little highlight to it. All right. So one more thing to do to these letters, and then we can call it quits. We can glue our stuff together and add our coffee K-cups, and we'll be ready for Christmas coffee. And then some Christmas cheer. So what I want to do first is I want to take my liner brush and I'm going to use a little different one just because I think I can handle it a little bit better. And I'm going to make a wash first of uh, Black Forest Green. And I'm going to line a shadow. And if you've painted with me at all before, you know what's coming. Going to line the shadow to the top and left side of each letter. So I'll get a little bit closer to this. So thin black forest green. I'm going to slide across the top. A little too much water in there. So I'm going to slide across the top and down wherever there's a left side just to pop those letters off the background just a little bit more and if you can't decide what's the left side just line a shadow it'll be okay just make sure it's a little wash Again, too much water. Across the top and the left side. It's like an O. It gets on the left side, which is on the outside of the O, and then the left side, which is on the inside of the O. And if you don't want to do this at all, you don't have to. Again, it's your piece. And this is one of those things where you just kind of take your time. I think the lettering probably takes longer than painting the whole piece. So wherever coffee, the word coffee is on top of the green, that's where you're going to put this. But there are a couple spaces where it's on top of the red. You don't want to do green on there. You will do a different color. I do think it helps to um, pop those letters out a little bit more. So on the letters that are down here on the 
uh, red and white part of the cup, we want to go ahead and thin down some of that cranberry wine or black plum or whatever color you use. And that's what we're going to use to do our shadow on that part. And just make sure it's a nice wash. Thin down. So you don't want it to take over. Especially on this white. You should have, your hand should have these um, shapes kind of memorized by the time we get done here. Just a little extra something to help the lettering. I think it really helps the uh, this lettering that's on the red and white. And we just need to glue our guy together, varnish him, sign him, and add some cake cups. I'm hoping to have more designs, more holiday designs for this. You know, Valentine's Day and Easter. Halloween. How could I not have Halloween? Alrighty, I think that's looking pretty good. So let's back off here. Oops, my little remote kind of came off its little thing. So I'm going to take my holly and I'm going to glue it in place. Again, using my little Aileen's. If it want, if it, I can get it to come out. Okay. So now you get to decide where your holly's going to go. I'm going to put it right there. I think that looks great. So I'm going to let that dry. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and varnish these pieces. And then I'm going to put it together. Um, so the base just kind of slips onto that little notch that you didn't paint like a cup. So you have a little base there. Let me back up a little bit. See if we can get this to look kind of good. Let me grab some K-cups. And we'll see what we got going here. Alright, pick it up a little bit, 
so you kind of get an idea. Got Christmas cookie, white Christmas, tis the season, merry mocha, and candy cane. So this would be a cute little thing to have set in by your um, Keurig coffee maker. So I hope that you enjoy it. I hope if you paint some of these um, for craft shows or something that um, they're good sellers for you. Um, I think they would be. But what do I know? Yeah. Anyway, so this is my First Comes Coffee piece for Twelve Town in December of 2023. Thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you again next year.